Well, my name is Julia Parker, and I've been a storyteller for a good many years. I come from uh, a tribe, Post Miwok and Kashaya Pomo. I uh, started out uh, being born in uh, Grayton, California, never realizing that I was affiliated with the Coast Miwok people. But my foster mother always said to me, she says, don't ever forget who you are or where you came from. She says, you're a little Indian girl. And that's what's always stuck in my mind, you know, not saying what particular tribe, you know, but you were a little Indian girl. When we teach our class, we teach you from our heart. Because I want people to understand that um, when you pick up these fibers, that they're, they're special. That's why I teach. When I work with uh, and talk to the, the students, I want them to think about themselves and to think about where they came from. I think about those women left us a legacy of a story that we should not forget. What these ladies did with their basket is the, is the finest of arts because these, these plants that they're using have not been touched by man. They've been touched only by nature. And then you have the privilege of going out and learning about these plants. And, and you listen to the stories when they say, wait for the leaves to turn yellow and they talk to you, you know. Scrape the willow till it sings to you. The first basket you give away, you'll be a weaver. Before we start our class, we always like to do a, a blessing because this is the home of our Coast Miwok people and we like to pay respect to the people that were here, my people, Lucy's people, Tim's people, Linda's people, and of course, your people too. I have learned by looking, looking at baskets, looking at the things that I make and try to make my work look like theirs. All of us who teach the story of basketry, that I think we're all looking for the same thing is that, that we want the people to have a greater understanding of what um, their own lives are like. And that, and that the, the uh, plants and the animals and, and the earth is, is important to us and to take care, of, take care of it like they did. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be making these brushes, something like this. Soap root brushes. This one, the reason it's light, it's the inner fiber of the soap root bush. This is the outer one. This one here is for either hair or for your um, uh, acorn powder. And this has the soap paste on it. It's all natural. It's hard to believe that there's a substance that is still growing today that will dry and it's as hard as rock like this. My great grand girl and I took about an hour and um, hour and a half to dig one up. And we kept digging and digging and digging when we loosened it up and pulled it out, it had 12 clones on it. We mm -hmm. dig it up out of the ground in the springtime when the soil is wet. What we do then is we take off all of this bristle. So this becomes your, your brush right here. We've and been taught to, to say prayers before we collect and uh, to give offering. And... Uh, then we can collect our, our fibers, you know. And I feel very strongly about that. When, we, when I teach or when, when I was with some of my teachers, that was taught to us. You know, you say a prayer or prayers were said, not in front of everybody, but one of my teachers um, always said prayers before we ever went out to collect. And uh, so when we do our basket of tree or singing or when we're here, we do our little prayer song too. and that maybe that I came at a time when the little sedge root was hanging there and it needed to be held again. And so by taking that sedge root and those willows and creating these baskets, trying to, you know, make a basket, that it's helped, it's helped preserve some of our story that was here a long, long time ago, but it's still here.
people will come to me and they'll they'll be very uh, negative. Oh, we feel sorry for the Indians. We feel sorry for what they did for you. And I let them talk. Because if I let myself bring them down to that level, then I'm siding with them and I don't need to do that. We need to look ahead and we need to help each other and take care of each other. We don't need to look back, you know. And not and and they always seem to emphasize on the Indian people, but yeah, there's a lot of other people out there that have been in you might say the same kind of boat as we have. The only thing is that they have a country to go to, and they can learn. With us, we have our elders. I think that we all have to learn about your own self, but most important, family. People say, don't you ever get tired? Now, how could you get tired of something that's alive? And that's what one of my friends said, that the roots are alive. And when you think about that, our roots are alive. And that they're never ever, they're hiding from us. But we can find them if we approach in the right spiritual way, thankfulness and being respectful too. the bowl. <laughs> okay, <At> the end. Yo hey ha hey, Molly wa hey. Molly ha hey, Molly wa hey. Molly ha hey.